Ms. Beauville, two years ago, you and your mother were shocked when the man you always believed is your dad told you he is not your biological father. You tried to bring the defendant to paternity court six months ago, but say he backed out of his appearance. Now that he is here today, you state the DNA results will finally prove your case. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Beauville, you claim for more than 20 years you held on to a secret and had no choice but to confess your belief that Ms. Beauville's father is another man. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Beauville, tell me what happened two years ago. Two years ago, I received a phone call from another brother of mine stating that my dad had doubts that if he was my father or not due to activities that happened before I was born. That was during Thanksgiving on a holiday weekend. And Can you then... be more specific? <clears throat> you say activities. What kind of activities? He felt like my mom was unfaithful uh, and was doing things that wasn't right within the relationship. Understood. So now, um, when I got the phone call, I um, kind of brushed it off and then my brother James was on the phone with my dad and that's when I heard him out of his own mouth say that he wanted to have a DNA test because he needed his own closure just to know if I was his daughter or not. And how old were you when this conversation happened? 25. So, so your whole life, until you were 25 years old, you think this man is your father? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Duval, what in the world are you thinking when your daughter gets this call? I was in shock. I had no clue that he ever doubted that Carrie was his daughter. Carrie was devastated. Well, I, mean, I, I she expect was, so. My daughter broke down, and this is my only daughter. Mr. Beauville? Yes, You Your decided Honor. to make this call on Thanksgiving weekend, sir? I asked one of my sons for Carrie's number because I wanted to share something with him. When I told my son how I felt about this situation that we're here today for, my son brought the information to Carrie. What, worked, only, what, only... what got you to this point? What led you to this point where okay. you said, this is, I have to talk about this? Okay, for, um, well, when I first met Regina, I, I, I lived in Boston. Regina lived in Springfield. And when I relocated from Boston to Springfield, the first two weeks I got there, People I didn't even know was telling me, yo, this guy's talking about that's his woman. And so I goes to Regina and I ask her, Regina, what this guy talking about? I only been in this town for two weeks. This went on for like 10 years. You know what I'm saying? 10 years? 10 years. And at the same time, I even, I even addressed it to Regina. Why does he keep telling that? Even her brothers had to go to him and, and check him on that. Am I right What's going right? on here, Ms. Duvall? First of all, there is, there is no truth to none of this. What let's, he just said. Yes, let's start there. Second of all, Mr. Beauville, if you doubted me, if you did not trust me, why did you stay? If you felt like that all those years, you should have left. So all of these years, Mr. Beauville, you believe that this other man who's married to a family member could be... Carrie's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. What convinced me was four years ago, I went to North Carolina, and I finally met some of Carrie's cousins. And the person that I'm talking to, one of her cousins, is his granddaughter. Your Honor, if I had a picture and showed it to you right now of her cousin, you would believe yes. that would be Carrie. If I showed you her picture, you would believe that was Carrie. Yes. And that's when I said, you know, I knew I was right. I knew I was right. You it, saw a picture of this man's granddaughter. Granddaughter. And it looks exactly like... I said, that's my... And I... And I yeah, tears came out of my eyes. And that's when I said, I knew I was right. I knew I was right. Uh, if you look at anybody in my family, from my first cousins down to my third cousins, we all have the same trait. One, we're all blind. We all wear glasses. Two, we all... We all smile exactly the same. And... The older I get, the more I start looking like my other cousin. The older she get, another cousin starts looking like me. It's in our genes. We all look alike. So, Mr. Beauville, all of these years, you have these doubts, I had these but doubts. you never share them. The things that went on before Carrie was born, the relationship they had because 
her and this person I'm talking about, they did, I mean, after everybody was telling me to keep my eyes on and watching them, now I'm, wa I'm, I'm watching them too. They used to disappear all the time. Oh, he's my wish partner. He was my best friend before you came to Your Honor, up. first of all, we are a very close-knit family. The grandchildren are 70-plus deep of my mother's grands and great-grands. And all of them look alike. But the one thing that I did not want to happen here is that my family values would be tarnished with the babbling and the things that he are saying that has no substance to them. So let me ask you this. During the window of time in which yeah. Carrie was conceived, the question really becomes, were you intimate with anyone else during that time? No, ma'am. Where there could be another potential father for this beautiful young no, woman? No, ma'am. At the end of the day, in paternity court, that's the question we have to answer. Now, what is interesting is in the court papers, I found her birth certificate. Now, on her birth certificate, there is no father listed. I never found none of my kids, none of my names on my, none of my kids' birth certificate. You didn't let them sign the birth certificate, Mr. Duvall? Nope, Ma'am, nope. no, that's not the case. Nope. Mr. Beauville never took the time to go there and sign those birth certificates. I told him time and time again, you are a grown man. Go to that hospital, to the wherever, and sign your children's birth certificates. I cannot sign them for you. Like I said, we all made mistakes. When we, at the time, we, before Carrie was born, we both made mistakes. See what I'm saying? Yes. And I'm not holding no grudge <laughs> against her, but them 10 years of living in Springfield, people that I didn't know coming up to me, see what I'm saying? Even, even when we moved to South Carolina, the same person was so infatuated with Regina, now she's my wife now. Anything that I did with my kids, he got mad. You are saying that this gentleman interfered in your relationship, in your parenting, so much that you felt like Ms. Duval and this person, they were having a relationship. Yes. And this was all occurring during the window of time in which Carrie was conceived and born. This yes. was going on all of that time. Yes, Your Honor. Did he ever say anything to you specifically about actually being Carrie's father? Yes, he did. When what I did moved he say? to South Carolina, he gonna say, that's my baby. That's my baby. See what I'm saying? About Carrie. Yeah, see, I would say, you know how, yeah, about Carrie. That's my baby. That's my that baby. That is a lie wow. straight from hell. Your Honor. That's a lie you know straight what? from hell. Your so Honor. let me ask you this. And we are in court, and I need your answer to be truthful. Why would they start this type of rumor? Why? Your Especially Honor. a person in the family. What, was, what would be the motive? The motive to me, if he was saying any of that, it was the motive was he was just a liar too. Were you ever intimate with this other man? No. For the hundredth time, no. I wouldn't even think about being in nothing with this man. Carrie was born, even though I had these doubts, I still loved her and I treated her like she was mine. How? How uh, can you say, how? Because how you can know you say that in court? Because, huh? You have never, you have never been a father. Because you know you have you never know been you know a father. What? You stop know lying Your like Honor, you the have. The that I gave you. You have the never. Pictures. Don't talk over you her, have Mr. Never. Oh, all right, all right. You can't stop. Graduation, you ain't come to mind. You know what? And I apologize for no, that because you know, no, I could not. You've never been a you father. You had one honest. birthday party for me. You gave me, but you sent boxes of clothes, giving me things as not being a father. I suffer because I've and never. And you know what? You did suffer. You. It's not. You know what's it's not, not fair, Carrie? I, I, I owe you apology, me. Carrie. You know I owe you apology. I suffer. My brothers are suffering. Yeah, yeah, you suffer. Of you, you did, I, and I owe you apology. Yes, you, know you owe me an apology, Miss Bo. Oh, Mr. Beauville. Yes, Your Honor. I'm gonna ask you one last time to be so... I'm so sick of hearing your mouth. All right, I won't say, I won't I, say I mean, another word, Your Honor. I mean, just the sound of your voice. I won't say another word, In my word, Honor. ear right now. While this young word. girl is trying to express to you what your absence, what your dysfunction, what your mistakes have cost her. Yes, you right, Your Honor. Go ahead, Ms. Beauville. You say you and your brothers have suffered. We all have suffered. I'm 
why people hurt me? Because of you and not having the love of a father. And if you have a father, you will never understand what not having a father does to you. Especially being a black woman. And I love God with all that, my that, heart, that was, but that it was, was your mother them. and your grandmother. It was father. not them. You they are not grown. Let me come see Mr. You. Beauville, you don't make grown. me come off this bitch. You are grown. And my mother has never, even when we tried to down talk you, she used to say, no, that's still your father. My grandmother, my grandmother never, she brought us to Massachusetts and sent us to your mother to visit you. My mother did that. My mother. How? My grandmother dropped, bought us on a bus from South Carolina no, to didn't. Massachusetts. No, my mother that did. That picture that I sent here with me and his other daughter and my other two brothers sitting on the couch was when we went to Boston. That was the first time I'd been back to Boston since I was born that I can remember. And when you went back, did he make an attempt to get to know you, to see you? We was, he was in jail, so that was the only thing I got to see you him. I went a couple of years ago. My aunt that lives in Massachusetts brought me there for Christmas. And I went and stayed with my sister. And I went and visited him, and I spent the day with him. And that was it. But the entire time we, we together, all he can talk about is the past of him and my mother. That has absolutely nothing to do, do with me. I'm 25. I'm not a child. I know what's going on. I'm very intelligent. I have a brain. I don't, I don't give two flying bananas about what they done before me. He talking about 10 years, but I don't care. It has nothing to do with me. Yes. I'm the child here. And you have to be able and you to get over that because it's not, I shouldn't be doing this right now. I shouldn't be having to do this with you. You are correct. She wanted you to... are correct. And you are a smart young woman. And I think you can see now even for me, why I am getting so agitated because everybody's talking in circles, everybody got stories, and I still don't have a great description as to what the circumstances were surrounding your conception. That's really all I'm here to get to. There because is. that really is the end-all, be-all of this particular saga. Mm -hmm. this, this particular moment in time is about that, to get the answer you need. Now, I want to hear your story. And part of that is your witness. And you brought someone with you. I would like you to stand, sir, please. And state your name for the court. James Beauville III. Please step to the podium, Mr. Beauville. I'd like to hear from you. And so Mr. Beauville is your father. Yes, my father. You're her brother. Yes, ma'am. OK, and you came to court to testify today as to... Me and my dad have a close relationship, so, like, he had told me this, like, four years ago, a few years ago when he come down south, but, you know, I had kind of, like, I had brushed it off, you know, because it was really, like, I didn't really find it, like, necessary to interrupt my sister with it, so I didn't tell her. So he mentioned it. it to you, but you decided not to say anything to your sister at the time. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like the time was right and the place was right to... What did he say to you in particular? I mean, when he seen that family member, he was like, don't she look just like Carrie? This could be such and such baby. So only thing I can go by is what he believed and how he feel. I can't go off or like, the only thing I could do is just step in the gateway and be there for it, which is my sister. Did he say he was not Carrie's father or did he say he wasn't sure? He said he wasn't sure. Okay, thank you for your testimony. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Duval, Beauville versus Beauville, when it comes to 25-year-old Carrie Beauville, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Beauville, you are the father. I knew he was my father, but now that he knows and he has no more reason to doubt me as his daughter, I really just want to tell him that I'm so sorry that you missed out. And I'm so sorry 
that you went through all that you had to go through that. Because I, I know it was a bad time in both of y'all's lives. And I just want to say that I forgive you. <laughs> I forgive you for everything. <laughs> Ms. Coe, you say you're here today because your daughter is an out-of-control teenager and she needs help. Furthermore, you claim that uh, you have serious doubts uh, that your daughter's boyfriend, Mr. Boyce, is the father of your seven-month-old grandson. You say Mr. Boyce has been a good father to the baby, but that your daughter has numerous sexual partners, and so he needs to know the truth. Yes, ma'am. You have also petitioned the court to demand that your daughter attend parenting classes. Now, Ms. Coe, you dispute your mother's claims. You say you are positive that Mr. Boyce is your baby's father and say today's results of the paternity test will prove your mother wrong. You have asked the court to order your mother to stop meddling in your life once and for all. Uh, now, Ms. Coe, please tell the court why you're here today. I'm here because my daughter is out of control. Um, she has an issue with authority. She doesn't want to be told what to do, how to do, or why to do it. Give me specific instances. Okay. From fights at school, hitting a police officer, not once, but twice. She hitting a police a, officer. She punched a police officer twice. Twice. I get the phone call to go up to the school. I get there. I was thankful that I knew this police officer. He looks at me and he says, this is your daughter? He says, I could take her to jail right now. She could have a felony. Wow. The officer got in the way. In, in your petition to the court, you stated something about uh, damage to your home. Please yes. tell me that. She made a phone call saying that I and my girlfriend had jumped on her because she still did not want to follow house rules. All I asked her to do was not disrespect the house. Don't bring the drama to the house. I feel we like had... that's not the truth. That's not the truth. You brought drama to the house. That's not you the truth. You made a phone call saying, my mother and her girlfriend just jumped on me. Y'all, you come mess them I up. I said her girlfriend just jumped on me, and I did have but somebody that wasn't come true. over there. She made that phone call. Them guys, they loaded up. They came to my house. They bust out every window. They busted out my car. They they destroyed my house. This was one week before I was um, that's actually. That's your car. That's my car. They broke out every window. That's my house. That's me standing on the porch trying to take a picture because now I'm upset and I'm like, you know what? I cannot believe my daughter is going to allow this to happen. And, and I couldn't saying, believe your girlfriend jumped on me and I was pregnant. So, so the she didn't the window jump on the car. They didn't jump. They broke out windows, car. They hit me with a brick. I got hit in the back of the head. What? And I you? also stopped them. I didn't think they were going to do that to the house. I didn't say mess the house up. They took that into their own hands. Zaire, I'm so disturbed by what I'm hearing right now. This is excessive. Right. And right Over now, the top. She's really and dangerous. dangerous. I want to know how did you get here? Well, most children grow up with their mother, not their father. I grew up with my father because due to the fact she abandoned me when I was two I years old. I did not abandon you. I was told she dropped me off when I was two years old and never came back. No. And the reason I believed it is because I haven't seen her until I got in my teenage. You didn't have so much as a visitation? Oh, yes. I had visitation rights. She came over on weekends. I never and missed so a And so did beat. you ever have a positive relationship? No, not really. When my She's mom... always been resentful. I, I feel like I had always a good, been resentful. A good always been resentful. Sometimes I'm not here to, you know, you you move them them boys in in our house. If y'all had a problem, y'all would have put them out. If y'all had a problem, oh. y'all would have so y'all would have enforced the rules so, and put them out. Did something. When I, when I'm a child, like you said, I'm a child. There, if it was a problem, you should have put them out. I ain't, if I'm when a child, we, I, I need to clarify something on this. Ms. Co. Mom, you're saying that Ms. Co. Daughter. Moved a gang into your home? Yes. It's at your house. You pay bills. If you wanted them out, you should have put them I out. I worked from 7 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning, seven days a week. How many people were there living down there? 
They weren't even living seven. down there. Seven people. Were you the only girl in this? It was three girls. It was me, another girl that lived with us, and another girl that lived with us. Everybody was living there. That was the hangout spot. That's where you go. You running away or you ain't got nowhere to stay, you gonna come there. Now, you're hanging out with these guys. Are you hanging out just as friends or are any of them more than friends? Are one you of them was the guy I was dating. The other one was just friends. They were dating my other two friends. So that brings us to why we're here. Because now you have a grandchild. But it's because... not just one guy. See, that's what she's saying. But it's not just one guy. There was somebody else in the picture. So, Mom, you're saying she was sleeping with multiple guys. I know that there was someone else. Now, how many more it was, I'm not for sure. But I do know that there was someone else. So, when I find out she's pregnant, I go to the guy. I go to Larry. I say to Larry, look, as Zaire's mother, I'm going to keep it real with you. I've got to be 100. I say you need to get a DNA test. But as the girl, me, I was being real, and I said, I'm not going to lie, but there is a possibility. He, this baby could be someone else. I didn't just say, you're the, you're the father, you're the father. I said it's a possibility, because I did do but something. Then, okay, I did see, mess up, and I did it. slip so and did. mess around with somebody else. So you have a boyfriend now. And that boyfriend may or may not be the father of your child. Yes, because I, w I did have a boyfriend, and I only messed with Larry when me and my boyfriend got into it. I went over to my best friend's house, and he was there. So now, what I believe, and you can tell me if I'm right, Mom, you're worried now about this cycle repeating itself. Exactly. And I know you still love and are concerned for your daughter. You've made that clear today. Really? Because even after she had done all of that to me, I move out to Arizona. She calls me two months later after I'm in Arizona. She says, Mom, I need you. I don't have anybody. Uh, you know, she's about to have my grandson. What do we do? And then she you seem still emotional. didn't want to do. What do you feel? Tell me. The it's okay. Only rule I have let her, for let her, her speak, Mom. What, what do you feel, sweetie? Tell me. You needed your mom? That's okay. We all need our moms. You, you don't have to feel ashamed and about I that. I was there for you. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Are you worried for your baby? You don't want your baby to have to grow up and feel the things you felt? What are your hopes for your son? What do you want for him? I just want him to have both of his parents. And I don't want him to grow up like I did. And I don't want him to run the streets like I did. Because I don't want him just walking out to the store and anything can happen to him. Well, today we are going to determine who his father is. And we're also going to help encourage you. Your mom feels your pain. And I know you may feel like she doesn't love you, but if you look over at her right now, she's crying your same tears. Because just like you love your child, she loves you. I know you brought a witness today, Mr. Boyce. Am I correct? Jerome, could you please escort Mr. Boyce into the sure. courtroom for us? I want to hear from him. He's your boyfriend, right? Yes, ma'am. And one of the potential fathers. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. OK. Mr. Boyce, please come and step to the podium. We know that um, today we're here to determine um, the paternity of this particular child. But we also know uh, that this child is very important to you. Yeah, he really is. Am I correct? Yes. Please tell the court about that. Uh, I feel like uh, from the beginning, I knew it was a possibility, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying, he, he, made, he made me grow more, you know what I'm saying, since he been around. Because my mom, she, she passed away. And once I told her about it, you know what I'm saying, she just, oh, that's my grandbaby. She, she buying them everything. I'm like, So I'm your gonna... mom... She passed away in February. And so you're hoping today, what are your hopes? Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he's mine. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mr. Boyce, um, I have to say to you that this court 
has seen countless instances where a young man stands before me and you can tell they're wishing they aren't the child's father. And I first want to commend you before we get any results of the man that you are, the man that you are growing and becoming, the fact that you can give love to a child that does have uncertainty uh, as it relates to who their father is, but that you understand that love can come from all forms, fashions, and people, and that you can be the father figure that that child needs, regardless of that. I want to commend you for that. Thank you. Yeah. And he's making you a better man. Yeah, he made, me, he made me feel like I got more to live for. After I lost my mom and my brother, I felt like I had nothing. That's my man's. You looking at pictures of you as a child and him as a child. That's I can see son. in your eyes you love him. I'm really, really proud of you. I really am. I Thank want you to know that. <clears throat> and you know who else is? Who? Oh. Your mom. Yeah. She is. <laughs> and as, you know, as much of a stand-up man, you know, you're being in this decision, in this situation, I should say, you're being a really mature individual. I don't think we can discount the fact that as you walked into this courtroom, you may and you should naturally have some doubt. You have that right, where yeah, you don't know. I have doubts, but... Why, why in particular, do because you have doubts? Because the time it happened, it's like, we, we wasn't together. She was in a relationship with another guy. I, don't, I always got a rubber in my back pocket, or a condom. I keep that. Even today? Yeah. Okay. I keep that. So, good, I mean, good. I I'm glad to hear it. I can't really say if I used it or not because I was, I was under the influence, like tough. So you don't remember if the safe, the sex you had was safe sex? Yes. It wasn't. And the defendant. I know okay. it wasn't because the first time, even when you wasn't under the influence, was you, you didn't drunk? use it. Was you drunk? What about the first time? Was you drunk? What about the first time? Was you drunk? No. Okay, the first time, that was something else. Did though. you use one? No. no. The second time? What? No. The third time? No. He didn't use one. I used condoms. Not with me? I, yes, I did. <laughs> right. okay. You ruining his reputation right here. <laughs> yes, I do, though. I probably ain't use them as much as I should, but that was because I was with you. Exactly. You didn't use them on Okay, them. but I used them after the one first time, time so. though. No, okay. So. Okay. He didn't use them. Miss Cope. Right. But you have told this court that you think it could possibly be Mr. Boyce or maybe someone else. Okay. Let's go to the results, okay? Jerome, do you have the results? Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Are we ready? No. I'm ready. I'm ready. When it comes to baby Christian, Mr. Boyce, you are not the father. Yes, you are. You hear his father. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, you are. I'm still his father. You okay? I know this was not the way probably any of you wanted this to turn out. 
because I can see it in all of your faces. <laughs> can I just... Jerome, can, can you can give I just me a touch tissue, him? Can I just... Can I just... I just... I'll just Hug him? Absolutely. Can I please? It's okay, <laughs> Barry. It's Absolutely. okay. We lost everybody, but... <laughs> you are alone. Can you just move on? I am so sorry, but it's okay. Mr. Boyce. I know the the news is going to take a minute to sink in. That's okay. That's all right. And I know it's hard to accept. But if you can hear me now and potentially just think about this in weeks and years to come, that families are more than just biological connections. They are love connections. Biology determines the father, but love determines who the daddy is. And... <laughs> the court is going to encourage you and provide you with resources towards parenting. I want you guys to learn about how to be great parents so you could do this for that little boy. Are we clear with that? I wish you all the best of luck. And you know what? At the end of the day, no matter what happens, look into that little face and do the right thing. Good day. Court is adjourned.